Well, of course, many retailing businesses have seen their earnings collapse during mm. the coronavirus pandemic. But well-known furniture and homewares business Nick Scarly Furniture has benefited from a renovation boom, actually enjoying a 70% lift in sales compared to the same time last year. Well, I spoke to Chief Operating Officer John Austin and asked him to explain all this success. We've obviously been uh, a beneficiary of some of the, the COVID expenditure, I'd, I'd say, you know, and the reallocation away from what has been you know, spent overseas historically on travel. Um, so, look, it's been, I would say it's not without um, its bumpy bumpy rides or, you know, some of the challenges I think we faced, you know, uh, in March and in early April, we had all of our stores across Australia closed. Um, so, look, I think it's been a ride, but um, absolutely there's been a reallocation of expenditure and I don't think that's going to um, change any time soon, primarily because we still have restrictions. Just in terms of the online presence that, that you had to roll out, I imagine, fairly quickly in March, April, yeah, did, did you have to engage outside providers to do that, I imagine? Look, we had done a lot of preparatory work um, prior to, I guess, COVID heating up. Um, but, you know, once it, uh, once it really started to hit and we obviously did shut our stores across the country, you know, we, we as the uh, kind of executive team and, and really all the team members um, in kind of head office really banded together and said, you know, what are we going to do? Um, and on the back of what are we going to do, it was, you know, we, we had this project already kind of bubbling along, but it was really all system to go mm. from our perspective. Um, and, we, and, we drove, and we drove a tremendous result, you know, launching, you know, in the, in the space of a couple of weeks, um, you know, getting out there and, and meeting what was, we knew was market demand. So roughly what share of sales now would be online versus in the store? Look, you know, we, we obviously um, have, it's, it's still small, I mean, mm. to, be, to be quite frank. You know, we, we obviously came from, from a standing yes. start, but, you know, we're very pleased with the growth. And I think, you know, we'll continue to see some of that evolve. But our stores are still an incredibly mm. important part of our network mm. as well. And I think the interplay between both our online and our offline presence is actually um, what the customer wants. Um, just interesting, those stores, I understand you have about 60 around Australia. Uh, so many, you know, some analysts say that the, sh that the shopping centre is going to die. That must be a great concern to Nick yep. Scarling. Well, you know... I don't think it's going to die. You know, my, my view is that it's going to change the way that we interact with them and, and the role that they play in the, um, the, the purchasing experience. I absolutely think there's still an important part of that. And look, we're, we're not sitting here saying when we won't roll out stores. I think it's quite the opposite, actually. Um, so look, it's, it's an important part of the retail mix for us. Um, as to you know, the online uh, piece, that will continue to grow too. Um, and I think the way that the customer interacts with our online will we'll change um, and, and it's on us as a business to find a way that they can interact both online and offline and get a very similar experience. Yeah, and just in terms of your sales now relative to last year, I understand throughout the middle of the year they're up about 70% compared to last year. Is that still roughly the case in October? Well, you know, obviously, you know, there's, there's a degree of, of changing. Obviously, we've had Melbourne, um, which has continued to be impacted as well. So, look, you know, the May and June, there was a lot of pent-up demand in the market as well, I'd say. So we can't expect that to continue forever, um, and I don't think that would be wise to do so. But, look, we're, we're, we're happy with the market that's out there. I don't think we as a business focus too much on, you know, what the market's doing. Is what are we doing that is within our control um, that allows us to, no matter what the market is for retail, um, and no matter how consumer confidence is, how do we as a business um, position ourselves to, to ultimately succeed over a long period of time? Mm. Well, just in terms of your of your media strategy, uh, historically you've put a lot of your effort into TV, uh, TV advertisements. Is, is that going to continue going forward? Yeah, we've, we've obviously been a long supporter of TV and I, I don't expect that to, um, to stop anytime soon. You know, it's an important part of our marketing mix and it will continue to be so. Mm. Um, have you changed your marketing strategy throughout the year at all to deal with the pandemic? Well, um, I mean, I, I think we really looked at our channels um, when obviously COVID struck. Uh, we really looked at our channels and we said, you know, there's, there's certain ones that potentially aren't as attractive now. You know, TV, people are spending more time in the home. So mm. TV was one that, that was continued to be attractive. I think the other thing was other ad advertisers, potentially large spenders were, were pulling back. So that presented an opportunity for people like us to, to hold expenditure and um, even, you know, look at channels and, and reallocate some of that expenditure mm. as well. So look, that was, that was something that we as a business got on top of very quickly and really looked at um, and said, how is the best way we're going to play out this next you know, couple of months to ultimately drive what we thought um, at the time was going to be a little bit of pent-up demand, everyone being stuck at home. There was always going to be yeah. that. I think the question then uh, was what happens after that period, mm. um, of which we're still you know, sitting with a bit of uncertainty. Mm. Well, presumably people also looking at 
their, their computers uh, more throughout the pandemic and their phones. Have you increased your spending on social media advertising as well? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously it's an important part to, to access the consumers. I think the uh, in this particular environment, the thing you that does impact, I guess, digital channels more generally is the appetite for or the small, uh, I guess, startup players mm -hmm. that you know are, are really digital first. Um, and they've expanded their expenditure online as well. So, you know, I'd say that whilst there is always a way we're going to, to access our customer online, we actually need to use traditional media and, and the, I guess, digital media in a combination to be able to actually win what we think is our customer. Hey, John Austin, thanks for your time. Thanks very much.